Welcome to an ultralight airplane design video from the ultralight airplane workshop. I'm Leon. This is another video in a series of videos covering the design of the what we're calling the UWS-4 ultralight airplane. And in this case, ultralight airplane is an airplane that falls under the U.S. Federal Aviation Regulations Part 103. Now we've already done a series of videos on this airplane covering the aerodynamic design. Now we're working on a little series where we're adding some more components to the airplane. We've already added the engine, we've added landing gear. Now we're going to add a little bit of structure to the airplane. Now to help guide us in all this design, both the aerodynamic part and a little bit here in the structure part, we're using a book from Dan Raymer, and it's called Simplified Aircraft Design for Home Builders. We're working on chapter four currently, and a section in chapter four is called Stuff the Structure. And what we mean by stuff the structure is we're going to look at the major components of the structure. We're not actually going to do any analysis or number crunching in this video. We're going to take a look at where we expect loads to be on the airplane and try to figure out how we might put the major components of the structure in there to handle those loads. So we're going to use educated guesses where we're going to have stresses, where we're going to have compression, where we're going to have tension, where we're going to have torsion, and try to figure out what major components of the structure we need to put in there in order to handle it. But like I said, we are not going to do any number crunching in this particular video. This video is in two parts. Originally, it was about 45 minutes long, and that's really too long, so I've cut it in half. This is going to be part 4A. In this part, we're going to cover the structure of the wings and a little bit of the boom where it attaches to the wings. In 4B, we'll cover the rest of the boom, the tail, and the fuselage. Now, let's get to it. Let me mention a little bit about how we're using Dan's book and how you might want to go ahead and get this book because you might want to do something different than what we're doing. We're designing an ultralight airplane that falls under the FAA Federal Aviation Regulations Part 103. And that limits us to 254 pounds of maximum empty airplane weight and a maximum of 24 knot stall speed. And that kind of changed the way we had to use Dan's book for the wing area and calculating the empty weight. We already knew what the empty weight was, but Dan goes through a lot of work in his book to try to get a first estimate of your empty weight. So that didn't help us a whole lot for our airplane specifically because we're going to try to get right up to that 254 pounds. And of course the 24 knot stall speed really put some bounds on the size of the wing of our airplane. So we really didn't have to go through estimates of what our stall speed would be. So we did a few modifications to Dan's book for those particular things. But of course if you're doing a home built yourself, those portions of Dan's books would be really important to you. And if you're doing your own home built, there are a lot of other sections in Dan's book or portions of tables in Dan's book that might apply to your design that really wouldn't apply to the specific airplane design that we're doing here, the UWS-4. So if you're thinking of doing your own home build, I really would recommend that you get Dan's book. It's a fantastic introduction on home built airplane design. And if you'd like to get Dan's book, I'll put a link down in the description of this video. If you follow that link, it will take you to a page on the Ultralight Airplane website. And there you see a number of books that I use in my design process. One of those will be here to the Simplified Aircraft Design for Home Builders book. Now, if you use that link to buy the book, the channel will get a small cut of the sale. Now, as I mentioned, this is a series of videos. Let's talk a little bit about what we covered in the previous video. And that one we talked about putting the engine in the airplane and some of the things associated with that. Now, Dan covers the pros and cons between the pusher configuration and the tractor configuration. We had decided way back in the goals of the airplane that we were going to use a pusher configuration. And the main reason for that is we wanted to have a fairly nice view out of the airplane as we're flying. And you usually get that with a pusher configuration. At least a better view than with the tractor configuration. Dan also talked about how far back the prop should be behind the trailing edge of the wing in a pusher configuration. Unfortunately, we really couldn't use his recommendation just because of weight considerations. But one thing he does talk about that I found interesting, I really liked, is he talked about how much cooling area you need for the inlet and the exit for the cooling. So for this airplane, we needed 40 inches total, roughly 39 we calculated using Dan's book. So I chose to put scoops on each side of the fuselage, just in front of the engine compartment area. And so those will be 20 inches each in surface area. And then the for cooling area outlet, that's supposed to be 80% of the inlet area. So that comes out to be roughly 32 square inches. And for that, we have a ring that is just a little bit bigger than the spinner on our prop. So it's right at the base of the hub of the prop where that cooling ring exit is. 
Now let's get into the structure part of this video. One of the things that Dan has not brought up at this point is wingtip treatment. What kind of wingtips you want in the airplane. And so I had not addressed it in any of the videos yet, but I decided I wanted to go ahead and get that taken care of. Now one kind of wingtip that is really useful is a Horner wingtip. And that's something that the Ultra Cruiser has. It's fairly simple to put in, doesn't add any significant weight, and it gives you a slightly longer effective span than just a square wingtip would. Now in a previous video, I had played around with some wingtips using OpenBSP and VSP Aero. I really liked one I had seen on some other airplanes I wanted to play with. It's basically a very short section out on the tip. It has a 30 degree dihedral. The trailing edge is fairly straight, at least along with the rest of the wing. The leading edge is swept back and you have a fairly small cord out on the very end. Now let's take a look at what I did there. From the center out to about here is the wing that we've had all along. So I've added this little extra section out here. So here's the 30 degree dihedral and you can see it's only about a foot and a half somewhere in there extension. Now it does add just a little bit more weight to the airplane. That's just a little more surface area. So what I may do in the future is lop a few inches off here and move that in so we have roughly the same surface area. Let's take a look at it at an angle so you can kind of see what it looks like this way. So you can see the straight edge on the trailing edge lines up with the rest of the airplane. The leading edge is swept back and we still have the same airfoil out here on the tip. That really isn't necessary. Could have used a symmetric airfoil out there. And you see the ailerons still stop where they used to. They don't go out here on this tip. So right now this is what I'm thinking of. I'm going to be pretty flexible on what I do on this wingtip. I may change to a Horner here in the future. Let's talk about a change that I made to the firewall location. Now I talked about in the previous video where I had the firewall placed and I talked about possibly moving it back just a little bit, a little bit aft. That would save a little bit of weight because that firewall is going to be fairly heavy and making that smaller would save a little bit of weight. It's going to be made out of stainless steel. So after doing some of the structural work for a while, I decided to go ahead and do that. So let's take a quick look at where that is now. Here's the top view of the fuselage. Of course, here's where the pilot sits. This red wire frame back here is the engine and the gear reduction right here is the prop hub where it would go. Here are the scoops. Now initially I had the firewall up about right here. And the reason I wanted it up this far is with the scoop on each side here, a duct would have to bring air back in at not too bad of a curve to get it into this fan right here. There's a fan here that forces air through the cylinders to cool them off. But I was a little bit worried about the weight because, let's look at the side, because right in here, the firewall had to be a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier. So right here is where the scoops are right now. But I've been getting so concerned about extra weight on this airplane that I decided to go ahead and move the firewall forward. Let's go back to top view. And so I'm just going to have to design ducts that go ahead and make a fairly sharp curve here and then come back over. It actually wouldn't have to be too sharp curve. But it's a little more than I had initially wanted. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like from the side. You can actually see the duct inlets pretty good here. So like I said, 20 square inches on this side, another 20 on here makes it 40. And then looking at the back, here's the annular ring for the exit. So cooling air comes out here. For you guys following along at home in Dan's book, we're going to start on page 55. And this is where Dan talks about the overall high level structural design. Dan uses quite a few paragraphs to talk about the various points of structural design. And instead of just reiterating everything he talked about, I just pulled out a few main points that we want to consider when we're working on our structural design. Ideally, your load paths, you want to have fairly short, as straight as you can, and you don't want any discontinuities or kinks in them. Now, realistically, you can't always do this. When we're talking about load paths, we're talking about loads being transferred from one part of the airplane to another. So, for example, the loads on the tail are generally going to be passed through the fuselage into the cabin area wing attach point. And of course the wings. The loads on the outer portion of the wings, like the ailerons, flaps, are going to be transferred in toward the fuselage. And the engine. Any loads that the engine is producing are going to be transferred through the engine mount 
and into the fuselage. And lastly, landing gear. Loads that occur as landing gear are going to be transferred either directly into the fuselage or through the wing and then into the fuselage. So generally all your loads kind of migrate toward the fuselage, at least you can think of it that way. And then related directly to trying to make your loads continuous is trying to avoid cutouts. So that would be like a kink or doors in your fuselage would be a cutout. The area that your pilot has to sit in is a cutout. So you want to try to avoid these because if you can't avoid it, you end up having to add more weight to the structure to make it more robust and stronger. Next thing he talks about is, at least in the fuselage, wherever you have point loads, so that would be, for example, if you have landing gear, wherever you have the tail attached to a fuselage, wherever a wing attaches to a fuselage, wherever the engine mount attaches to a fuselage. You generally want a bulkhead there to help handle those loads. And similarly, you can think of ribs as being bulkheads out in the wings and the tail. So wherever you have point loads in the wing or your tail, you're also going to have a rib there. On designs where you had the landing gear attached to the wing, you generally want the load from that landing gear to go directly into your main spar if you can. And then last point that he wants to emphasize is that the place where you have the highest point loads or the most concentrated loads are where the wing attaches to the fuselage. So these are the key points we want to use when we're trying to figure out the structural design of our airplane. You can start your structural design just about anywhere you want. I'm going to start with the wing. That's really pretty much the main structural component of our airplane. Now Dan talks about several different ways of handling wing load into the fuselage. We're going to use something that's very similar to what he calls the bending beam. Our entire center section of the wing is going to have bending beam for the main spar and I've decided to go ahead and do bending beam for the rear spar just on that center section. Now the reason for the bending beam on the rear spar is because of our tail booms. There's going to be quite a bit of torsional moment caused by those tail booms in pitch and I want a bending beam for the rear spar that can handle that. So let's take a quick look at that. So here's a top view of our fuselage and our wing. This is the front over here. This red line will be our main spar. This area back here, roughly the hinge location for our flaps and ailerons will be the rear spar. This is the center section. So this will be bending beam through the fuselage here in the center section for both the main spar and the rear spar. I'll do the same thing. So let's do a little curve like this. Now I probably will not do bending beam out here for the rear spar on this outer section. I don't think it's necessary at all. The rear spar will only be designed to handle shear force. It won't be designed to handle bending. Bending will be handled entirely by the main spar out here on the outer panels. Now my current plan is to aluminum skin on this wing. That'll give me some aerodynamic advantages. It'll be fairly smooth. We won't have those dips in between ribs like you would on a fabric airplane. And that aluminum skin will carry a load. It'll carry the torsional load of the wing. So that'll be true for both the outer panels and the inner panel. And I'm thinking that a skin of 6061 aluminum, T6, that is 16 thousandths of an inch thick, will be able to handle that torsional load, although we'll try to do some analysis to make sure. We already talked about the main spar, although I didn't mention that it will also be aluminum. That's the, at least the current plan. The rear spar will also be aluminum. There will be aluminum ribs in there. Now I'm not going to show you all the ribs because I haven't exactly decided how many ribs and where all the ribs are going to be, but I'm currently thinking they're going to be a truss style rib. Now that's pretty flexible. I'm not sure exactly how I'll do the ribs, but I'm going to make them as light as I can. And let's take a look at the main ribs that we're going to have in our design. Again, we have a top view of our airplane. Main wing, back here's the aft edge. Here's some landing gear. That's going to be important. So these kind of reddish lines you can barely see in here are ribs. So this is a full rib. Here's a front rib. Here's a mid rib. I didn't bother to show any ribs here in the ailerons or flaps, but based on the way the Ultra Cruiser does ribs, I will probably only have ribs at each end of the ailerons, each end of these flaps, the outer portion of these flaps, and probably one rib right here in the center of this flap section. This flap here will all be one piece. But now to the main ribs, let's start here in the center section. The attach points for this wing to the fuselage will be roughly here, 
in here. And that's because this fuselage tapers in from the widest point as it comes down to the wing. And there will be a attach point back here. Three attach points for the wing. So I'm going to have ribs here to help carry shear loads of the engine forward to the main spar. Moving out a little bit, these ribs here, I don't know if I'm going to have both these ribs here or not. I'm going to have to have some way for the pilot to climb up into the cockpit when we're sitting on the ground. So one possibility is that I will have a step area where you can step on the wing here. So these ribs fairly close together are intended to carry a load of the pilot stepping on the wing. And I'll only do that on one side. There's no need to do it on both sides. We'll just mount into the cockpit from one side. And I'll probably have to put something like a doubler for the skin underneath the skin to distribute that weight from the skin over to these ribs. And there's no need to have ribs back here to carry any load for the pilot to step on. Now the other possibility is I'll have a deployable step that comes out of the fuselage and down that you can step on to get up in the fuselage. That's another possibility. If I do that, then I'll get rid of one or both of these ribs here. There will be other ribs in here. I'm not gonna bother showing those at this time. They're really not a major component of the structural design. Next coming out is where the landing gear is. So where I'm gonna have this landing gear attaching to the main spar, I'm gonna have a rib coming back this way. When we come in landing and hit, we're gonna put a load here, which is gonna to try to bend the top part of the spar back, the bottom part of the spar forward. And so this rib here is to help prevent that from happening. And so there's no need to have a rib going forward at this particular location, although it's possible we'll add one. Right here is where the center section and outer panel separate. So from this point out, it'll be a separate panel that can unbolt from the center section. So I'm gonna have a rib right here, just in board of that. It's gonna help hold the airfoil shape, plus the boom going back to the tail, which will be right here. There's gonna be an attach point right here, and an attach point right here, and another one out here. So torsion loads, up and down pitch loads, from the tail will be countered by this rib and this rib together. Let's put that tail boom on so you can see where that is. Okay, I popped up the tail boom here, so there'll be an attach point here, here, and here. I said the front attach point will be here. That's not quite right. It'll be right here. But the rear attach points will be here and here. So those ribs will help carry some of that torsion load forward to the main spar. Now, on the outer panel, we again, we're going to have a spar here. Number one, to help hold the shape of the airfoil right here where there's a separation between these two panels and it's helped to transfer load from the rear spar to the forward spar. Now, let's talk about some other point loads. These ailerons and the flaps are gonna to have to have some hinges. Now, we could use a full-length piano hinge. I don't wanna add all that weight. It isn't really necessary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put hinges out here on the ends of the ailerons and flaps. So I'm gonna have a rib here to help transfer loads from the aileron to the hinge and on up to the main spar, and the same thing for the flaps. So it'll be a spar here. This spar is gonna help transfer that load. This spar here also helps transfer some of that flap load. And of course, there's a spar out here, because there's gonna be a hinge here, to transfer some of that load up here to the main spar. This also helps hold the shape of the wing out here, where we're going to attach this wing tip. And speaking of the flaps and ailerons, I'm intending at least initially to make them all aluminum, including the skins. I'm gonna keep the option open to do fabric covering to maybe try to save some weight. But the problem is that lower portion of that airfoil is concave and fabric isn't gonna work very well in that concave area. Let's take a quick look at that. So you can actually see right here, this is the inner flap where we have a concave area on the airfoil. So fabric wouldn't work too well in there, but I'm gonna keep my options open to do that. Now, I already mentioned the booms a little bit. The booms, again, are gonna be st stressed skin aluminum. There are gonna be some bulkheads. But right now, I'm thinking the only bulkheads will be aft of the wing trailing edge, starting at the wing trailing edge and going aft. And we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm still not positive about how I'm going to do the, where the booms attach to the wings. I want the booms to be detachable. I can unbolt them. So that adds a little bit of a design issue, but it's not big. It'd be a little bit easier if they were directly integrated into the wing. 
So let's talk a little bit about why that's a little bit of an issue. So here are the booms. Tail is back here, attaches the booms, carries loads up to the wing. Now since I want to make these booms detachable, they're not going to be integrated directly into the wing. I've got a little bit of an issue here. I want to have this wing keep its normal shape. I don't want to do any cutouts into this flap that's here. So this area right in here will act a little bit like a split flap where the flap is going to be underneath this boom. So right here and here are attachment points for the boom attaching to the rear spar and now it's going to have a single attachment up here where the main spar is. So if I was going to make this sheet aluminum that would be very difficult to carry those forces through here. The force up here on this one is going to be fairly significant in pitch. It won't be insignificant for lateral forces but pitch will probably be the highest force. And this distance here isn't very significant so there would be fairly significant stresses through this area also. So I decided not to do stressed aluminum skins in through this area. I decided to go ahead and add a steel tubing structure in here and I'll probably cover it with some S-class fairings because I want to try to fair this in through this area. So let's go ahead and show that. So I've added in here what I think I'll probably do for tube structure from this area right in here forward. So here are the two rear spar attach points. Here's the front attach point. And then here would be an aluminum bulkhead that would then be aluminum all the way on aft. So obviously this steel structure in here, which would be something like 4130 steel tubing, chromoly, it'd be welded together. And like I said, probably covered with an S glass covering. And it would be all fared in here to reduce interference drag. And doing this, I don't have to do any cutouts of the wings. So the skin can come all the way out here on the wings, so I don't have any cutouts there. So that should help carry any torsional loads very nicely. I'm going to leave you in a little bit of a cliffhanger here. We've only made it part way through the boom, but this video is getting too long, so it got cut here. I will continue with the boom in the next video. That'll be part 4B. I've already done the initial edit on it, so it shouldn't be long until it comes out. So as I said in the next video, aft boom will be the next part we work on. Then we will come back forward and work on the fuselage to finish out this structural design video. Well guys, thanks for watching.